Hello there. We've got a great show lined up for you. This is Delay of Game. Oh, baby! It's pretty uh, obvious, isn't it? That is suspect. The Sports Talk Podcast. Woo! I'm going to get some cold cuts today. Now that's got to be exciting for you. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. With Ryan Swanigan. Nothing says Big Ten football like Maryland and Rutgers. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. What are we talking about? Listen and learn. All surprise, welcome in to a unexpected, I will say it's definitely unexpected podcast. You're probably wondering who this uh, scruffy looking nerf herder is. Uh, This, as you can tell, is a very biased Chiefs fan who also just happens to be my father. His name is Brian Swanigan. And welcome into the Delay of Game podcast. As I said, special edition Super Bowl coming up. Dad wanted to say how the Chiefs are going to win and be uh, successful in getting a second Super Bowl, first time in franchise history they go back to back. So here we are. Welcome to the, uh, welcome in, Dad. Well, thank you. I, I'm going to shock you a little bit here. Well, that's not possible anymore, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm not 100% on board saying that they're going to, this is going to be an easy win. Really? Yeah. Well, let's get into that then, because um, obviously, as everybody knows, I am not a Chiefs fan. I don't have an NFL team. I will kind of lean Chiefs, but that's because, you know, they're the regional team. They're exciting to watch. Uh, but overall, I just want to watch good football. Right. This Sunday, we're going to get good football. We're going to get, you know, the greatest quarterback of all time and Tom Brady going to try and do something that, you know, in, in terms of a sport overall, LeBron James has only been able to do. And I'm sure other, you know, if you don't count baseball, uh, because it's easier in baseball to do it than it is uh, in any other sport. So, and that is Tom Brady trying to win another championship title with a different team. Um, Of course, the defending champions from last year, Kansas City, who I, to me, dad, seems like this team, these Kansas City Chiefs just like, they, with, when Patrick Mahomes is healthy and he's out there, it's almost like there's no effort at all being put into any aspect of the football game. Does, do, you, do you see it that way too? It's like when they are they are uh, uh, doing you know their game. It, it's almost like they're just. It's almost like they're practicing. They're, yeah, they're, they're trying to work through some of the new. Uh, plays that Biennemi and Reed have come up with because you got to remember they didn't have a preseason this year, so their preseason was pretty much, you know, throughout the entire season. Our Same season with the Buccaneers too. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, with the Buccaneers is different because they had to get used to a quarterback. And, (laughs) I mean, James Winston was not it. Tom Brady coming in, I mean, he's the GOAT. So, they had to get used. And you could see in the beginning, they were struggling as a team, having a hard time getting it together a team. But at the end, when December rolls around, Tom Brady lights up and he's actually doing what Tom Brady does, and that's win games. So. I'm, I I, kind of had a feeling it was going to be Tampa Bay. I was just waiting for Tampa Bay to, uh, to actually start getting in gear. Whereas Kansas city, it's, it's really been, it's like, well, let's try this. Well, let's try that. Oh, we're behind by nine points. Okay. Well, Tyreek, you're there open, get in. You know, and, and anybody, they can just it, turn it, it on whenever. Yeah, it's like turning it off and on on a switch. So I have the, – the only time I really saw them kind of panic was the Cleveland game. 
And because Cleveland was basically smashing them right in the mouth. Buffalo, Buffalo, that wasn't even, uh, that was a practice. That was not because, even close. Because, yeah, because you, you take away McCole Hardman's fumble, this is a blowout. I mean, it, it wasn't a game. I mean, uh, Buffalo's got a good team. They're going to be, you know, building, growing stronger, and and they'll be the, now the new New England Patriots of that that con, or of that uh, of that uh, uh, division. But again, in the end, you've got Kansas City. But here's here's what I see. I mean, being a longtime Chiefs fan, I've seen how the uh, that they can win. And I also have seen how they can lose. I mean, they're not called the Chicago Cubs of the NFL for a reason. So, so in order for Tampa Bay to win, the first thing they have to do right off the bat is win the coin toss. That is the first important thing. And they've learned that from the last time they took on the Chiefs. And if you or win the Patriots, the coin- excuse me. And when you win the coin toss, you cannot defer. You have to take the ball right then and there. And then you can't get into a uh, track meet with them. You're going to have to run the ball, slowly eat up time, and get into the end zone. And then when Mahomes does have the ball, you can't blitz him because he'll beat you on the blitz. I would rush three people and then the other eight back from linebacker on and almost play a zone and try to pick off Patrick Mahomes. Which it can be done. Be, yeah, it can be done. But the deal is, is when he gets picked off, he's not rattled. He just keeps throwing. So you've got to be able to have – secondary back there to flood the area and be able to pick. If they think that they're going to be able, you know, well, we're just going to chuck it down the field and so forth. Not going to work for them because the one thing that Tom Brady does do an awful lot is throw picks as well. And if he starts throwing picks, you know, who's going to be feasting back there, the honey badger. Mm Mm-hmm. He could take one back to for a pick six. So they will need to slow the game down, try to do like Cleveland did and punch them in the mouth and make them fight the entire game. Otherwise, because uh, here's what I'm hearing. Well, if they take away Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill, you shut down most of the game. You haven't even hit scratched the top of it. Still got three other receivers plus uh, Edwards Alary, who you still have to cover there. That's four other people. And you and Watkins is going to be back. Uh, Robinson. Uh, McCole Hartman, who actually is the fastest guy on the team. He's, he's like a tenth of a second faster than Tyreek. So that's where you're going to have to have eight guys – up back in the back to cover all those receivers and the tight ends, which means then, well, Andy Reid's not going to sit there and try to throw it all the day. He's going to give it to Edwards Hilaire, or he's going to uh, 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 fire up the old Pittsburgh Steeler, Le'Veon Bell, and he will start running rough shot through there. This is going to be a long, tough game for Tampa Bay if they don't play smart and play it right. They have to play an error-free game. If you don't play an error-free game, this is going to be like one of those New England games. Like, you remember on, on, on a Monday night uh, football, 42 to 21? Mm-hmm. I mean, the, uh, Kansas City is the one team – uh, with Andy Reid at the, as the head coach, that Tom Brady has struggled against. Let's and that the uh, and I heard this on uh, I think it was uh, uh, Colin Cowherd. He said that if you took away 
D Ford's offsides. This would be the third Super Bowl in the year that Kansas City would be in. Because Kansas City taking off Tom Brady. He's got a he's literally got to eliminate the, the in or the interceptions. It'd be a zero at, at interceptions. Otherwise, there's no way that Tampa Bay is going to be able to keep up. I mean, I, I, I like the fact that they've got Sue, uh, former UNO Maverick. Um, oh, now I'm forgetting his name, but he's, he's also on the defense there. And, David, you know, that, that's nice to have the Nebraska connections there. But the, the Kansas City's big one weakness right now is the fact that both um, both tackles are out with, and they need Schwartz, and they definitely needed Fisher. Mm-hmm. But they've got good replacements in there. I mean, you don't go and play in the NFL uh, without being having some talent, and that's even second string stuff for practice squad, because there's a lot of people who want to play football, and you got to be the elite of the elite. Mm-hmm. So. If they do rush, then you're going to have to put a lot of pressure on those tackles, which would then require, okay, we got to leave Kelsey back to block or Le'Veon Bell back in the backfield to block. And that's what I'm going to see. It's you. I wouldn't be surprised to see a two-back uh, scenario with Bell being like the blocking or, uh, or uh, 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 the sausage him being back there, being a blocking back as well. So they, they can kind of stop that blitz part. But, again, you're talking about Patrick Mahomes, who's – you, you see a, he sees a blitz, he's out of the pocket. And then he will make this crazy cross-body throw to somebody who is absolutely wide open and nobody thought about. So I'm going to say – if Tampa Bay does that, where they can punch them in the mouth, slow the game down, cause you know bump or, re, or interceptions, and they have a score on those interceptions, I see Tampa Bay probably pulling it out like a twenty-eight, twenty-seven, real close. If Tom Brady is Tom Brady. And he hits the jinx where he's throwing picks to everybody in in a red uniform. This is going to look ugly, and it's going to look ugly fast. And it's not like Tom Brady hasn't lost a Super Bowl before. I mean, he's not perfect in his Super Bowl attempts. It's just the fact that he's been there so many times and has six of them. It's just like... We're, you know, we're so used to that, but we we sometimes forget that, yeah, Brady has lost some Super Bowls. So it yeah. is possible. Yeah. And it could be, you know, another New York Giants scenario. You never know. It's, it's just – I think there's two things that – into this game that going in favor – since we've talked a lot about the Chiefs and, and, and what Tampa Bay needs to do – Kansas City has, as we've talked, as we mentioned, has had such a long run of success since that very weird loss to the Oakland Raiders. Um, It's the question of, is that going to run out here? Like, does that momentum, is it possible that that momentum could run out in the most important game of the year? Because, yeah, we talked about the on and off switch, but what if Kansas City tries to flip the switch on and nothing happens? And the other part of that that kind of ties to it is this is the second time that the Chiefs and Buccaneers will face face each other this year. Mm-hmm. It was not even a football game the last time these two met in Tampa Bay. So that's the weird part about this is this is meeting number two in the same location probably who who cares about the weather but 
it, it's just one of those things where has Tampa Bay carefully, has Tampa Bay's defense carefully realized what they need to do in order to stop Kansas City's offense? Because I think that's the biggest thing. You know, everybody talks about the Chiefs offense and talks about the Buccaneers defense. Well, then what about when those two collide? What happens when Tampa Bay's defense, uh, for the second time now, with knowledge of what Kansas City can do against them, firsthand experience, they have film to look at, what happens when that defense gets a second chance against Kansas City's offense? Will Kansas City be able to get past it and get the job done? Or will Tampa Bay uh, actually learn from, this, from the past game and understand how to stop a grand total of six different weapons, all of which could be on the field at the same time at this play or that play. I don't, I don't think the concern really is about Tampa Bay's offense. I'm not that – I don't think Tampa, Bay, Tampa Bay's offense is going to be that big of an issue because they have been rolling at the perfect time. Like when the playoffs mm-hmm. happen, boom. It just – everything kicked on in the right gear, and they took off. They looked not as good against Green Bay two weeks ago, but that's more so on Green Bay because they just totally botched the opportunity to go and seal the deal and take on the Chiefs. Uh, so Tampa Bay's offense – I mean, I'm not that concerned about it. I just want to see what happens when this, you know, the the Chiefs offense goes up against this defense for Tampa Bay a second time. Now, now one of the things that is a big Achilles heel for Kansas City is their run game or their, their run defense. If Tampa Bay start, gives it off the four net and he starts tearing up holes, then they're going to have problems. And that's another thing that Tampa Bay's got to do. But Tampa Bay's defense has got a problem that you can't coach out of them, and that's speed. They, their secondary was beat constantly by those wide, speedy, the, you know, the Legion of Zoom. You can't coach speed. You can only draft it. And so you've got Watkins, who says he's healthy, and he's still – he's the third fastest guy on the team. Hardman, uh, Robinson, Hill. I mean, there's four people right there that any team would die to have because they're so fast and they got good hands. You throw then in, in Travis Kelsey there, run rough shot through the middle. I mean, like six six, and he's he's just he, he's a man amongst children sometimes. He's Rob, he's Rob Gronkowski's cousin. Yeah, yeah, he is a he's a younger version of Rob uh, Gronkowski because when I was watching Gronk this year, he looked like he was like, yeah, I'm back from retirement, and it's like, dude, you should have stayed that way. You're just you're you're not the Gronk that you were in in New England, mm-hmm. so that's going to be Tampa's problem if they can't slow down the the uh, wide receiving core. It's it's going to be a long day because you 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 can't give Mahomes time to throw. And you can't rush him because then you got to remember, he's still got legs. And he says that, that uh, turf toe has gone. He's good. All right. <laughs> Think of last year. All those teams, he, he, I mean, they spot Houston 20. They spot Tennessee 10. They spot uh, San Francisco 10. They spotted this year Buffalo nine, and nobody was even panicking. And it's just like, so deep down, I have a feeling it's going to be a, a second, a second uh, Super Bowl trophy for Andy and everybody in Kansas City. 
because in the end they just play with too much fire and the other thing is they they're not playing to not lose they play like it's like hey we're getting together a game in the backyard and we're gonna have fun that is the deal and that's just why a lot of players who are actually taking less money to stay or go to kansas city say this is what i want i mean i'm making good money but we're playing to have fun. And for the first time players will say, this is just like, you know, the neighborhood kids playing football and we're going to have fun and we're just throw the ball around and see what happens. You can start playing with that reckless abound. You can't defend it. I mean, it's hard. I think also too, that the fact that there are, I am noticing, I keep seeing this this whole week. A lot of people are betting against the Chiefs. Like yeah. they are consistently betting against the Chiefs. I have yet to see, you know, a, a push notification or some sort of headline, some big headline of some high end person betting in favor of the Chiefs. I am seeing a lot of people go in favor of Tampa Bay because of the Brady factor. I get that. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely justifiable. But I think that that also uh, factors into Kansas City's uh, approach toward this game. They take that as a bit of a chip on their shoulder. And I think Patrick Mahomes, too, has had a bit of a chip on his shoulder this year because, you know, before the season began, way back when, it was like, oh, can he do it again? He might not. He he might regress this year. You know, the, the stereotypical – post-Super Bowl championship fallout that we see in all these other teams and even in other sports, too. And, and Patrick Mahomes took that as a chip on his shoulder and look at, look at where they are. They're, I, I don't know if you think this or not, but I argue that Kansas City this year is easily better than last year's Chiefs team. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether or not it ends in a in a Super Bowl victory or not, I think this year's team would would just blow out last year's Chiefs team. And last year's Chiefs team was more of a, you know, we get down in certain spots and and all of a sudden, you know, you just all right, well, let's pick a quarter in which we flip on the switch. This year, the Chiefs are just like, no, let's just do it now. They they just don't they don't even pick quarters anymore. They just pick whenever they want to flip it on and they just go ESPN had a great article today uh they were talking about not only the Chiefs but the entire city of Kansas City where this Super Bowl is not only exciting but it's making Kansas City also kind of self-conscious about themselves which it which it shows that they are they said they're not the city like Denver that's got the mountains. They're not Chicago that's more metropolitan. They're just a bigger version of Omaha is mm -hmm. what they are. They're a, they're a big cow town, and that's what they you know still are. And that's not only just with the Chiefs. You saw that a few years ago with the Royals. Nobody would give the Royals a shot, and what happens? They're 90 feet away from tying up the World Series, and they win it the next year against New York. It, it's kind of been that attitude. It's like, oh, well, who, there's nothing in Kansas City. And that affects the people. That affects the players and everything. And so, yeah, not all – I mean, it's, even the soccer team, Sporting Kansas City – Every Kansas City team plays with a chip on its shoulder because everybody looks down on even the little brother in Missouri. Because when you think of Missouri, well, it's St. Louis. St. Louis is a more organized and more established sports city and so forth. They just say, you know what, if you're going to think of it that way, us that way, don't care. We're just going to go have fun. And if you can beat us, good luck. Because that's that's what uh, that's basically been the philosophy of the hunts. That and faith, and and it's just like you know what, 
we're just here to try to do the best we can out here and and make our make our folks back home proud of us and <laughs> and and the city the citizens of Kansas City reciprocate that mm -hmm. i mean the two world championship uh uh parades that they've had huge huge parades and everybody just it being one big barbecue party for everybody and 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 it's just not only the you know the city of kansas city i mean let's face it here in in nebraska saturdays are the nebraska corn huskers but on sunday I mean, it used to not be when they, Kansas City was bad. It's like, oh well, yeah, all we got Chiefs stuff. But now that they've gotten together, everything they've been kind of bringing in another pride into into this part on the professional side. There's a lot of people in Omaha every Sunday go down to when they have uh, tickets because they they're t uh, ticket holders, season ticket holders. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of season ticket holders here in Omaha. Same as so, Lincoln too, I bet. Yeah, so this it just gives the flyover part of the country a sense of pride, a sense of you know our hard work and everything will be rewarded, and so it it, it feeds off the fans to the team, the team feeds in back and forth, and and the guys who were who who play for the Chiefs, they it's I mean. You can see the difference between football players in, in like New York or Los Angeles, where they've got the Hollywood crowd or the rich, you know, crowd. and then you've got the common everyday working Joe who will pluck down money to go see his team play. They live and die with with these with these players. These players also invest in the in the city as well. And it's just like, it like like parents watching their kids do well, and they're mm -hmm. so proud of them and everything. These guys don't leave. I mean, Tony Gonzalez still lives in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes is has bought some land, and he's living. He, he's <laughs> he's going to retire. And, and stay in Kansas City. So is Travis Kelsey. Everybody's just, that's home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, they say, I've got to give my best. So. Yeah. Big game on Sunday. Chiefs and the Buccaneers, Tampa Bay, Kansas City. And uh, I think you already gave your prediction, right? You said 20, 28, 27, or I, I guess you, that's, what, well, that's a scenario you threw a scenario. out. What, what, do you, what is your official prediction on this? I'm going to weigh out on a limb. And it's going to be another one of those 41-17 games. I think so. Because in, in the end, if, if the Kansas City's front line can bust through and, and get to Fournette in the back, which they've done, it, it, to all the different, I mean, they have shut down like Henry and it's a laundry list of running backs that are 200 yard rushers per game mm -hmm. that gets nothing against the Chiefs. Yeah, Fournette has to uh, somehow figure out how to uh, get the ground game going. Him and uh, the other running back for Tampa Bay too. I can't think of him. Off, think of his Actually, name off the top of my head. Isn't but... it McCoy? No, Sean McCoy. It, no, it's he's like the third string. It's the second string guy that's also really good too. I want to say it's Jones, mm. but anyways, Tampa Bay's running game. That's another thing that also that, yeah. has to uh, really. They have to figure out a way to establish themselves. Otherwise, it's a re. It's going to be a repeat of the last game. Otherwise, you're going to have Jones on one side, Clark on the other, and Naughty and everybody else, Okafer, just flooding into there. And Brady's going to panic, and he's going to throw, and the Honey Badger's going to be just sitting back there watching. And then when you flip it around, I, they're going to have to. Tampa is going to have to flood with a with a zone in order to stop these speedsters 
Because if they don't, 70 yard, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And it's going to get into a track meet, and Tampa Bay doesn't have the guns to do that. And that's where I'm, I'm saying is that's going to be their downfall, their secondary. So I would say, yeah, I'm going to say 41-17. MVP, Travis Kelsey. Mm. I'm going to say 45-35, Kansas City. I really think that this is going to be I, – I just had this feeling it's going to be a very high-scoring game. But mm-hmm. I don't think that Kansas City can lose. I just cannot see in my mind a scenario where Kansas City loses. And maybe that's just because we have seen them win and win and win all over the place. Again, ever since that Raiders loss, even at the Raiders loss, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. They, they what? How did they lose to the Raiders? And we're still and- asking that question to this day. And remember, they lost two games. The second one, all the starters were sitting, and we uh, started Chad Henney, and he still almost pulled it out. Yeah, against the Chargers. And that was, that was honestly, that was an sh- offensive shootout. Yeah. And that the Chiefs didn't win because they didn't have the main people in there. And so, yeah, yeah and nobody thinks about that loss at all. I, I mean, there's like almost nobody who thinks about that loss because it wasn't a – legitimate Chiefs loss it was what huh you know you you just have no clue that it's there so if we're counting games in which Patrick Mahomes has started uh you know the Raiders game is the only one so that's why again I say I cannot see a situation where the Chiefs lose but I do see this being a high scoring game because the chiefs have given those games up. And I think Tampa Mm -hmm. Bay right now is carrying momentum offensively where Tom Brady, who is back in an environment that he's used to can get the offense down the field and score. But I think Tampa Bay does not possess the ability to stop a team like Kansas city. So 45, 35, Chiefs win. I'm just give it to Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes the MVP. Uh and uh yeah, that's that's all I got. Um uh, Brady is going to have to do the exact opposite of what he usually does in order to win this game. He can't try flinging it down the field. Mhm. Cuz it won't work. Mhm. He's going to have to take it slow and eat up time. Otherwise, yeah, it's going to be – you try to get in a track meet, you're not going to win. But, see, even in that, too, even if he does try to eat up time, I still see Kansas City – they can score so quickly. They have that ability. So that's why I say I don't – even, you know, when you throw counter scenarios of, well, Tampa Bay has to do, the, to do this, well, it's like Kansas City will just – this is how they'll go and overcome that uh, because it's just that easy for this team. <laughs> it is so easy. And that's, so, why, that's why I said that in order Tampa Bay went on defense, they have to flood the zone. I mean, they've got to have eight guys back there constantly waiting to pick the ball and then turn around and eat time up and get in the end zone. That's the only way you mm-hmm. can beat them. He's my dad. His name is Brian Swanigan. The uh, most adamant Chiefs fan probably that I know in my life because I've been around him for so long. (laughs) Buccaneers and Chiefs, Kansas City, Tampa Bay this Sunday. Enjoy. Dad, you enjoy the Super Bowl. And thank you all for listening. Stay safe. Stay well. Enjoy this weekend. And we will talk to you again very soon. Go Chiefs!